Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for watching over us for the past week. We thank you for all of the bountiful grace and blessings that you have poured upon us. It is through your grace and your goodness and mercy that we are able to live. So at this time, as we have gathered in your house, may we be able to give you all the glory. May we be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. And may this worship be pleasing in your eyes. Please remember each and every person that is here today. You know exactly their thoughts and the prayers that are in their hearts. Please listen from heaven, incline your ears, and answer each and every one of our prayers so that we could have the testimony that our Father in heaven is living and active and intervening in our lives. Help us to always seek you when we are in time of need. May we never seek the help of the world or other human beings, but help us to only trust in you, Lord. We thank you so much for this time. I pray that you will fill our hearts with your word and spirit so that we may be able to go out into the world tomorrow and be able to live a life that is separate and a life that is victorious. We thank you so much and we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. today comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verses 11 through 13. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verses 11 through 13. It's in the Old Testament. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verses 11 through 13 and I will now read. It says, Then David gave to his son Solomon the plan of the porch of the temple its buildings, its storehouses, its upper rooms, its inner rooms, and the room for the mercy seat, and the plan of all that he had in mind for the courts of the house of the Lord, and for all the surrounding rooms, for the storehouses of the house of God, and for the storehouses of the dedicated things, also for the divisions of the priests and the Levites, and for all the work of the service of the house of the Lord, and for all the utensils of service in the house of the Lord. And this is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good, afternoon. Good to see you all. So as you may have heard, uh, our power is partly down. So I was sitting in my office this morning, like 9.30ish, 10 o'clock, and I hear this boom. It was a really loud sound. I thought it was an explosion. And I guess it kind of was because... The PSEG guy came just before the service and told us that one of the fuses went out on the, um, the poles out here. So uh, one line of uh, like electrical line that comes into our church building is out or down right now. So that's why lots, some of the lights are out, the audio is not working, but thank God the AC is working. You know, when we went to Israel, they showed us where Jesus used to preach with like 5,000 people without any mics, right? So we have it so easy these days. Jesus had to preach just with his voice. Anyways, so today in the First Chronicles chapter 28, verses 11 through 13, I'm going to share with you the message entitled, The Duties of the Priests and the Levites. So the text that we read today shows us, or tells us, that even though David could not build a temple himself, God said his son Solomon would be the one to build. But God showed to David all of the plans of the temple. We didn't read that, but that's in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 19. So God showed to David all of the plans of how to build the temple. But not just the plans for the buildings itself. In verse 13, it says the, the divisions of the priests and the Levites. That was given by God as well. So not only how to build the buildings of the temple, but the organization and the hierarchy of the people that works within the temple has been given by God as well. So God was so meticulous in everything that he taught David how to do all this, and David taught 
his son Solomon how to do all that. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. This organization of the Levites and the priests and how they are to serve in the temple. So how does this apply to us today? In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible tells us that we are the royal priesthood. All of us who believe in Jesus Christ, we are now the royal priests. Okay? So we are like the spiritual priests of today. That's why the duties of the priests and the Levites are important. But not only that, the duties and the, uh, of the priests and the Levites teach us how we need to live and how we need to serve God here on earth. Okay? So basically, this is what the structure is like. So we have HP. What does HP stand for? Hewlett Packard? No. I'm not talking about printers. High priest, right? The high priest at the center. And then we have priests and Levites and musicians and gatekeepers. These are the four duties that God has given to the tribe of Levi okay, to assist the high priest in serving God. Okay. So uh, you could already guess what the, the first blanks are, right? These are the four duties. And then for each of these duties, God divided them into 24 divisions. Each duty has been divided into 24 divisions. Okay, so this is what we're going to be talking about today. Alright, so let's go to number one, the 24 divisions. A complete system for ministering in the temple. So as I said, there are four major duties, right? The Levites, priests, and then the third one is musicians. So that would be the blank. Musicians and gatekeepers. Okay, so David organized all four duties into 24 divisions, right? So the word division basically means like this classification or hierarchy within a military or religious organization. In Hebrew, it's mahaloket, which means order. That's the main meaning, order. So, for example, the 24 divisions of priests, they took turns in who went into the holy place to serve. So each division was served two weeks in a year, right? Each division serves two weeks. So there were 24 divisions, right? So that means 48 weeks, right? How many weeks are there? There are about 51, 52 weeks, right? So each division serves two weeks. When you take the when you rotate like that, that that takes care of forty eight weeks, and then the re, the remaining three or four weeks, all of the divisions come together, because there are three major feasts, right? Like Passover, you know, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Tabernacles. That's when all of Israel comes to Jerusalem, so they need all hands on board, right? So that's how these priests served within the temple. Okay. So, let's look at each of these duties in order. First, let's look at the duties of the Levites. Now, when we say Levites, I have to clarify this. So, there's the tribe of Levi, right? So, at Mount Sinai, when Moses went up to receive the two stone tablets, Aaron was down at the foot of the mountain, and all the people said, Moses is dead, he's taking too long, so let's make another god for ourselves so we could go back to Egypt. So they made this golden calf, right? And God saw this, God told Moses to go down. So he came down, he was very angry. So he shattered the two stone tablets. And Moses said, whoever is on God's side, come out. And that's when the tribe of Levi came to Moses' side. And God commanded that 3,000 3, people who committed this idolatry be struck down. And that's what the Levites did. And so from that day on, God said, the tribe of Levi has been dedicated to me, to serve me. So originally, 
God wanted to take the firstborn from every family in Israel. And they would serve God. But now God said, okay, that's just too hard to do, right? So what is he going to do? Instead of each firstborn from every family, I'm going to take the entire tribe of Levi as my firstborn. Okay? So the tribe of Levi from that point became the firstborn tribe, and they became the tribe that would serve God. The, their whole life is just dedicated to serving God. So the tribe of Levi foreshadows the true firstborn of the end times. That's, I believe, who we are, right? The ones who believe in Jesus Christ, right? So the duties of the Levites show us what we need to do and how we need to live here on earth today, right? So that's the tribe of Levi. And that tribe has been divided into these four duties, right? Priests, Levites, musicians, and gatekeepers. Now here, when I say Levites, it's talking about not the entire tribe, but one-fourth of the tribe. So what were the duties of these Levites? Basically, these are the temple servants. Okay? These people serve the temple. So let's look at the duties of the Levites. They're twofold, right? Number one is to oops, number one is to assist Aaron, the high priest in the service of the tabernacle. So in Numbers chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, it says, Bring the tribe of Levi near and set them before Aaron the priest, that they may serve him. They shall perform the duties for him and for the whole congregation before the tent of meeting to do the service of the tabernacle. So the duty of these Levites is to assist the high priest in serving God. Right? Their main duty in the temple is to worship God. Right. So the main duty of the Levites is to assist the priest so that the worship services go on without any problems. That was their main duty. Worshiping God is at the center here. Okay. And then in Numbers chapter 18, verse 2, it says, But bring with you also your brothers, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, that they may be joined with you and serve you while you and your sons with you are before the tent of the testimony. So here it says that the Levites are to be joined with the priests, right? That's the blank there, joined. This word join in Hebrew is lava, which means to twist, to interlock, to become one. So they have to become one. They have to work together as one. It's interesting because the word, the name Levi derives from that same word, lava. Levi means to be joined or to be united. Okay? So that's our job. We have to become one with Christ. Right? The congregation and the pastor has to become one in serving God to make sure that every week worship service goes on without any problems. So this morning the power went out. Everybody was like scrambling. But we have all of these people working together. right? So things are okay. We have this battery powered amp and speaker so you guys can hear. So our broadcasting team did all of this at a moment's notice, right? So that's what we're supposed to do. And number two, or B, the second duty of the Levites is to perform the duties of the whole congregation. Okay? So that was here in the second part, in verse 7, it says, they shall perform the duties for him and for the whole congregation. So what that means is they're still supposed to serve the people, the congregation of the church, but also serve the church itself. So the Levites took care of all of the holy vessels that are within the temple, all the things that, that are needed to worship God. So we have to think of it like this. Whatever is in the church is a holy vessel. Even, you know, this cup, it's just a regular cup, but because it's used in the church, it's a holy vessel. We have to think about it like this. Because everything in the church or in the temple has been set apart for use to serve God. And it was the Levites who were to take care of those things and manage them. So we also today, we have to revere the sanctuary. That's what Leviticus chapter 19, verse 30 says. That word revere 
is only used for God in the Bible. It means to fear, right? We're supposed to fear God, right? Revere God. But in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 30, it says, Revere my sanctuary. Okay? So that means the church and all the things that are within it, we need to revere. We need to take care of them. Because they are holy and set apart for the use to serve God. Thirdly, let's look at the duties of the priests. So we just looked at the duties of the Levites, who are the temple servants. Now let's look at the duties of the priests. These priests were set apart to carry out the tasks related to the sacred services, right? Worshiping God. Okay. What was their duty? A, their first duty is to interpret and teach the word of God to the people. The first and main duty of the priest is to interpret and teach the word of God. Okay. So in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 10, it says, They shall teach your ordinances to Jacob and your law to Israel. They shall put incense before you and hold burnt offerings on your altar. So first, they shall teach. Okay. One important aspect of teaching God's word, as it says in Leviticus chapter 44, verse 23, is this. Moreover, they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. That's what teaching the Word of God, one of the main aspects of teaching the Word of God means. So, teaching the Word, because it's the duty of the priest, many Christians think, oh, that's what pastors do, right? But as I said at the beginning, we are the royal priesthood, all of us, not just pastors. So we all have to do this. Okay? You may not stand at the pulpit and preach like I'm doing, but we all do this in one way or another. If you serve as Sunday school teachers, that's one way. When you go out to evangelize, you may teach the Word of God in some way. But also, if you're a parent, we do this. What do you do? When you tell your kids, that's not right. The Bible says that's a sin, right? Then you are teaching them to discern between what is holy, and what is profane. That's the duty of all of us. We have to do this. Okay. So, interpreting and teaching God's word is a ministry of providing what? Two things. Truth. God's word is the truth, right? And because the word of God teaches us how to discern between the holy and profane, it provides holiness. The word of God is holy, therefore, when we receive the word, we become holy. Okay? And then the second duty of the priests is to, the duty to offer incense to the Lord and burnt offerings on the Lord's altar. Incense and burnt offerings. So we read Deuteronomy 33, verse 10, right? It says, they shall teach your ordinances to Jacob and, and your law to Israel. And then it says, they shall put incense before you and hold burnt offerings on your altar. That's their second duty. Incense and burnt offerings. So what does that mean? In the Bible, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, it says, when he had taken the book, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, right? So what is incense? Incense symbolizes the prayers of the saints. So today, we don't burn incense at church. At least not in our church, right? However, we do pray to God. So our prayer is like spiritual incense. So... What is the main reason for burning incense and offering burnt offerings? It was to take care of the sins of the people. Right? The burnt offerings took care of the sins of the people. So the du this duty of the priest provides righteousness to the people. Okay? Because they are helping them to atone for their sins and recover their righteousness. So in essence, as 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 says, that's on your sheet there, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 says, and put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. As this verse says, we need to become a new person in Christ, right? We need to be born again. How? In the likeness of God, right? The image of God. In righteousness and holiness of the truth. So those are the three blanks there. Righteousness and holiness of the truth. And the priest does that through word and prayer. So that's our duty today. Our main duty is to study the word of God and pray so that we could recover our righteousness and holiness. Number four, let's look at the duties of the musicians. The musicians were entrusted with the duty to prophesy through music. That's a very strange way to put it, right? So in 1 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 1, it says, Moreover, David and the commanders of the army set apart for the service some of the sons of Asaph and Haman and of Jeduthun, who were to prophesy with lyres, harps, and cymbals. These lyres, harps, and cymbals are musical instruments, right? So how do you prophesy with musical instruments? It's kind of strange. So... On the surface, the duty of the musician was to sing praises, and by doing that, they proclaim God's word through the song, right? However, for us today, what does this mean? I think we need to look at it a little bit deeper, look at the spiritual side of this. It's not just talking about the praise team. So if you're not on the praise team, then this duty of the musician has nothing to do with you. That's not what this is. It has to do with all of us, right? So how? The, the duty of the musician is to glorify God through praises, okay? And our founding pastor, Reverend Abraham Park, used to say this, can you see the trees and the flowers and all of nature singing God's praises? And when I first heard that, I was like, what, what does he mean by that? When you see the flowers and the trees and all those things in nature, you see how beautiful it is? It glorifies God just by being itself, right? With the beauty that is in it. That is, in a sense, singing the glories of God, singing praises to God. These flowers right here are singing God's praises right now because it is glorifying God, right? So that's the duty of the musicians. That's what we need to do. So the duty of the musician is sort of an outward thing. It's something that you do not only in the church, but outside the church. Because music is loud. It proclaims far and wide, right? So that's what we need to do. Not just in church, but on Monday through Saturday when we go out into the world, we need to glorify God with our lives. Our lives, our actions should sing God's praises. The people around us should be able to see that. That's what the musicians are supposed to do, spiritually speaking. So that means this is, a, this is something that we need to do when we're not only at church, but every day of our life. Our life should be singing praises. And finally, number five, the duties of the gatekeeper. The word gatekeeper in Hebrew is shamar and refers to people who guard the entrance of the temple. The temple is a holy place, so it should be set apart. Okay? It cannot have the profane coming into it, right? So the duty of guarding the gates may seem like something, you know, it might seem like a lowly position in today's terms. But the Bible says it was a special position that was entrusted exclusively to the Levites who were chosen by God. How is that? For example, in the Garden of Eden, Adam was the gatekeeper. 
God told Adam to keep the garden. But he failed. And he let the serpent in. And so that's why he fell. Right? So the duty of gatekeeper is very important. And in ancient times, gates were very important. Because all cities had walls surrounding them. In case of war, they just lock the gate and the enemy cannot come in. But if you are able to break through the gate, you have won. So in Genesis chapter 22, verse 17, it says, Indeed, I will greatly bless you, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens, and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. This is a blessing that God promised to Abraham, right? He said, your seed, your descendant, will possess the gate of their enemies. If you possess the gate, that means you won. Okay? It signifies victory. Also in Matthew 16, verse 18, it says, I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. So the church that Jesus has built, the gates of Hades, Hades means hell, right? So the gates of Hades here signifies the power and authority of hell. That the power of hell cannot overcome the church of Christ. So the gate is very important. We need to be diligent gatekeepers. We need to guard our gates, the spiritual gates. Because we are the temple of God, right? That means we need to guard the temple that is in our hearts. So that sin and darkness of the world cannot come in. So the musician is a duty that needs to proclaim God's word outwardly, loudly to all the people around us. And on the other end, the gatekeepers are supposed to guard the gates so that we can live a life that is separate and set apart from the sins and darkness of this world. So in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 it says, Above all else, guard your heart. For it is the wellspring of life. So, those are the four duties. Now, let's look at the redemptive historical significance of these four duties and the 24 divisions. As I said, these four duties teach us how the true saints should live here on earth. Right? The number four in the Bible signifies the world, right? The four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. So what do we need to be? We need to be priests. That means we need to be diligent in word and prayer. Secondly, we need to be Levites. That means we need to serve in God's church. We need to take care of this church that God has given to us. Thirdly, we need to become musicians. Not just in singing and playing music, but we need to spiritually glorify God by singing His praises through our life, in our everyday life. Right? And fourthly, we need to become gatekeepers. That means we need to live a life that is separate and set apart from the sins of this world. So the 24 divisions were a complete system of serving in God's kingdom. This is how the people who live in God's kingdom should live. We are trying to establish God's kingdom here on earth, right? So in Revelation, we see something similar to this. So in Revelation chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Around the throne were 24 thrones, and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their heads. And then in verse 6, it says, And before the throne there was something like a sea of glass, like crystal, and in the center and around the throne, four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. So here... We have this, we have the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and then the four living creatures around Him, and then around them are 24 elders. So it's a very similar structure or hierarchy that we were just talking about, right? So this is in heaven. So this hierarchy that God gave to us is a copy of what's in heaven. So we need to be like these four living creatures and the 24 elders. Okay, we need to become spiritual 24 elders. Okay. So, what were the characteristics of these elders? 
Here it says they were sitting on thrones wearing white garments and golden crowns, right? So number one, these elders sat on thrones. What are thrones? Thrones are chairs that kings sit in, right? So these are symbols of kingship. They were rulers. So when I see a ruler or king, many people think, oh, it's like, yes, I could go and just lord it over people and tell people, hey, do this, go do that, serve me. But that's not what kingship in the Bible means. As rulers, we need to rule over three things. We need to rule over ourselves, which is, I think, the hardest. Secondly, we need to rule over sin. And thirdly, we need to rule over the world. So these 24 elders, the fact that they sat on thrones means they were able to do this. Rule over ourselves, sin, and the world. Secondly, they were clothed with white garments. Okay? In the Bible, white is a symbol of purity and victory, right? So in Revelation chapter 3, verses 4 and 5, it says, But you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their garments. They will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will be thus clothed in white garments. See that? He who overcomes. So it symbolizes purity and victory. And in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, it says, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So what did they overcome? They overcame the tribulation. Right? We all have hardships in our lives, right? So we need to overcome that, but still keep our faith. And thirdly, the, the 24 elders had golden Crowns. Crowns, again, symbolizes victory, but these are golden crowns, right? In the Bible, gold is a symbol of unchanging faith. Gold doesn't change, right? That's one of the reasons why it's expensive. So gold is a symbol for unchanging faith. Even if there are tribulations, these elders, their faith did not change. Their faith does not waver depending on their circumstances. When things are going well, their faith goes up. Things are going down, their faith goes down. It's not like that. And then finally, number four, these elders were humble. Humble how? In Revelation chapter 4, verse 10, it says, The 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever and will cast their crowns before the throne. So this is their crown. God has given it to them, right? But what do they do? They cast their crowns at the feet of Jesus. Saying, basically they're saying, we don't deserve to rule. We don't deserve this. This is from Jesus. All that we have is the grace of God, right? Even our faith. So they humbly acknowledge that everything comes from Jesus Christ. So this is the kind of heart and faith that we need to have. Then we will be part of this structure and hierarchy who could serve God in His kingdom. And Jesus has called us for this work. So it is my prayer that all of us will remember these four duties. As priests, word and prayer. As Levites, serving the church. As musicians, glorifying God through our lives. And as gatekeepers, living a life that is set apart and separate from the world. Amen? Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace in teaching us about the duties of the priests and the Levites. Father God, we have to admit and confess to you that we are unworthy and at times we are too weak and frail to do any of these things. However, it is through your grace that we have been called, so we depend on your grace and your mercy God, I pray that you will uphold our hearts and enable us to have the strength to be able to walk according to your will. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ fill our hearts so that we could be transformed, transformed from within. And may the Spirit of God guide us and lead us 
so that we may be able to walk with you, Lord. We thank you so much for the blessing of being able to believe in you and being able to serve you here on earth, Lord. May we become faithful priests and Levites who will serve you in the church in which you have sent us to. And may we become faithful servants who will glorify you through our lives. And may we be able to live a life that is set apart from this world. We thank you so much for all that you have given to us. So at this time, we want to give this offering to you, Lord. I pray that you will enable us to give with thanksgiving and with joy. And may this be pleasing in your eyes. And I pray that this offering may be, only be used for your glory and for your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, and pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's give glory to God for our God. Please turn to hymn number 394 as we have a time of offering. Thank you. 